Today, 10 Republican senators opposed the original bill for a wide variety of reasons. And we're going to go over a lot of them right now with my next guest. He's a no at the moment, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Senator, how are you? And good morning to Very good. you. So you've had a week to think about it. What wins your support? Well, you know, I promised to vote to repeal Obamacare. So when the bill looks more like repeal, I could be a yes. I think the current bill keeps the fundamental flaw of Obamacare. And the fundamental flaw of Obamacare says, you know what, there's an insurance mandate that says you can buy insurance even after you're sick at no additional charge. If you tell people they can buy insurance after they're sick, they will. And if you have mandates that make it expensive for young, healthy people to buy it, they won't buy it. So what happens is the death spiral of Obamacare. If you don't fix that and you simply pass a Republican bill that maintains the death spiral of Obamacare, that's a huge, big, huge mistake. Okay, let me go over a couple of things here. Have you met with Mitch McConnell? Let's say in the last see, two weeks specifically on this. <laughs> I see him all the time, but we've had no specific negotiations over the bill. I've sent him a written uh, series of requests about how I think the bill could be made better, and I've gotten uh, zero response that they're interested in, in any of my suggestions. Is that because they're your suggestions or they don't like your suggestions? You're not <laughs> at that point yet. You understand, the, you know, you understand we'll where I'm see. going with that question? We'll see. I think we're at impasse, and I think eventually they will come and talk to me if they want my vote. Okay. At this point, at this point, they're going in the opposite direction, and the way Washington typically works is they get your vote by offering you more money for a pet cause. But I'm a fiscal conservative, so throwing more money at the bill actually makes me less likely to vote for it. Well, is, is opioid funding, is, is that a pet cause? $45 that, billion dollars that may bring three no's to a yes? It's not fiscally conservative because we haven't spent the $2 billion we appropriated last year. So let's spend the money we've already appropriated. I voted for some of that. Let's spend it. Let's spend it wisely, see if it works. But I will tell you there's nearly $200 billion in there as an insurance company bailout. The insurance companies make $15 billion a year. I am aghast and appalled that Republicans are now in favor of an insurance company bailout. That's a terrible idea. It's very un-Republican. It's not conservative. has nothing to do with capitalism. It has to do with crony capitalism, and I can't vote for that. Okay, and I've heard you say that repeatedly before. Before I get too far away from the Senate Majority Leader, uh, there was a suggestion, if Republicans can't get their act together on this, that they'll have to work with Democrats to shore up the markets under Obamacare. Now, is, is that a threat, or is there more to that, do you believe? <laughs> you know, only time will tell. I can say there's another alternative, and the alternative that I've put forward is, let's do what we promised, clean repeal, separate that from all the big government spending programs, and put that in a separate bill that maybe Democrats and big government Republicans might like, but conservatives like myself won't vote for. But if you want conservatives to vote for this bill, it needs to be more of a repeal bill. So strip away all of the extra big government spending Put that in another bill, and you can work with Democrats for all I care on that bill, wow. but I'm not okay. going to support that. Right. So, so but you, I will vote may, for clean repeal. You may not get your way, and just come back to the question <laughs> here. Um, if the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, is looking for a way to help Americans, this might be the solution in the end. Do you think so or not? I think separating the bills will ultimately be a solution. The other solution is he gives up and he goes and works with Democrats. I think giving up on something we promised for six or seven years and punting and saying, hey, I give up, I'm going to work with Democrats, I think that's the wrong strategy. And I think Republicans will be very unhappy across the land if the Republican leadership gives up and goes and works with the Democrats. I think what they need to do is give up on saying they're going to fix everything and they need to say, let's do what we promised, which was repeal Obamacare. Okay, two more points here. Ted Cruz is got an idea along with Mike Lee out of Utah sort of separating the law from requiring insurance companies to carry all of the mandates under Obamacare. This is sort of how we explained it late last night with Sean. When it comes to Obamacare, the most important thing, Sean, the way we unify Republicans is let's focus on lowering premiums. The biggest reason so many millions of people are so unhappy with Obamacare, are hurting so badly, is that it's made premiums skyrocket. And I know you've got a big problem with the premiums, too. Is his solution one that's viable? Freedom of choice allows competition. So, yes, if you allow insurance companies to sell uh, insurance policies that don't fall under the mandates of Obamacare, you will have less expensive insurance. However, 
The amendment still will keep one Obamacare policy, and there's fear that there will be adverse selection. And the trade-off here is, and this is a trade-off that I'm not necessarily willing to take, is we'll take the Cruz amendment, but only if we get billions and billions more of subsidies for insurance companies. That, to me, is not a uh, pro-free market trade-off. So I'm for the amendment, but I'm not for the subsidies that they're piling on to the insurance companies. Okay, interesting. We'll watch that. Chuck Grassley's up here in 45 minutes. We got a lot to talk to him about, the FBI and on and on and on. He sent a tweet out over the weekend saying, if Republicans fail, you will go from, you got me, Senator, you still with me? Still with you. Okay. We will go from majority to minority. That's what he's warning. Do you agree with him? I think there are two, two viewpoints here. One is that if we don't pass something that the electorate will get angry and unelect Republicans. The other possibility, and this is what I adhere to, is that if you pass something that doesn't work, that leaves in place the Obamacare death spiral, but now it's called Republican care or Ryan care, I think that's a bigger disaster than doing nothing. So I don't agree that doing nothing is the worst case scenario. I think passing a bad bill that leaves in place the Obamacare mandates and the death spiral of Obamacare, that's the worst of all possible scenarios. Um, uh, should you blow off the August recess? Where are you on that? I think we should get our work done, and I'm forgetting our work done you know, as soon as possible in the next three weeks. I really think August 1st should be the deadline. Let's get it all done before August 1st. But if it goes into August, are you cool with that or not? Will you stay in Washington to get it done? I will do whatever it takes to do, do the work we need to do, but I think the work we need to do ought to be done you know, last week, much less waiting another month. We'll see. Senator, thank you for your time. Rand Paul, more to talk about real soon. Thanks.